Hi, how are you? You're all right? Good. <laughs> right, yes. So my, um, well, you were regular. Is not present today because she is sick, but she assigned me to replace her for the moment. Um, I hope you don't mind. Yes, typically, um, you know, for these types of arrangements, it's not usually done, but this was a special case. Um, anyways, what she has told me is that you, you know, she regularly deals with, um, you know, a lighter spectrum of, uh, of cases and that's totally fine and something that the system can work around on you know we still want to be able to provide care to everyone so um, she's given me your papers here uh, just to reiterate you are can you give me your last name oh okay yeah that's not the one uh, let me check the other file How about this one Uh, nope, that's not the one. Uh, give me one second, please. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, no, she, she dropped the files here. I just need to double check. Sorry. Well, she did drop the files, but the schedule is a little bit wonky, so. What about, yes. Perfect. So it's this, not these. Okay. Put that back there and put this here. All right. So I do have your notes. Perfect. Wonderful. She's giving me everything. And I just need you to answer a couple of questions for me based on um, the file that she sent me. Uh, please don't, um, you know, don't think it's weird. It's something that helps me sort of get to know you a little bit better and have the process um, handled faster. Yeah? Okay, well, she's going to be gone for, like, just this session anyways. And so we can treat it as a bit of an update on how things are going. And I will probably stick to what she's advised anyways, um, just to sort of help reinforce things. Yeah? Okay. Okay, so, how have you been feeling in the past two days? Mm hmm And you mentioned you have a pet. Oh, that is so sweet. Can you give me a description of her? Him? They? Them? <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. All right, and you are, how long have you had them? Okay. And how is your relationship with your pet, really? That's nice. They're quite spoiled, aren't they? Well, yes, because, well, you know, they're not necessarily humans, but you seem to treat them a lot like they are. And that's not a bad thing, actually. Your pet is extremely lucky. I'm just saying that you might want to reflect on that a little bit. Mm-hmm. And can you give me a better picture of your daily routine? Yeah, you're... Initial doctor basically wrote some notes on what your routine already is, but you know, you never know there might be a change in how things are So I'd like to take note of that for her mm -hmm. mm. That's a little bit excessive don't you think? Well that you are you seem to be leaving during extreme hours and well, I understand traffic could be a little bit of a bitch, but an hour too early or an hour too late? That's a bit too much, don't you think? No, no, no. Sorry, that was out of line. Of course, you understand your roads better than I do. But where do you exactly uh, commute and how long is that, typically? 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Oh, okay then. Right, yours is more reasonable than I thought, sorry. I tend to live, like, in the inner city, so it's typically much easier for me to commute. Sorry, I'm showing off a little bit of my privilege, and my, my apologies. Yes, well, typically my patients are a bit more brute, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Like, they're very straightforward, and sometimes I... My, um... My way of counteracting that is just being as straightforward as they are, well, in terms of how they are, and it sort of gives them a little bit of a reflection on, you know, their, you know, if they could be saying some things that might be considered a little bit too insensitive. So forgive me for bringing this into a practice, which is, you know, more, typically more accessible to everyone. Mm. Okay, so... No, no, no. I don't think you should change your daily routine. If it works for you, then it works for you. I will, however, take note that you are taking a bit more caffeine than usual, I think. Because from your previous records, um, you seem to only be taking a grande. And now you're telling me that you're taking a venti? Well, I'm thinking that it might also attribute to your... Um, to your anxiety. You know what caffeine does, right? Yeah. Is it because you've been lacking more sleep or just your regular sleep? Okay. Well, why is that? Why have you suddenly upped your... Oh, well, of course that makes sense. Pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> no, no, no. We all have our vices. And unfortunately for you, yours is a seasonal vice. <laughs> so you want to take advantage of all of that as much as possible. And do you do this for your other, you know, splurges? Well, when it's something that you get occasionally, right? Like what you're doing with your pumpkin spice latte, not judging, um, you tend to up your um, consumption. Of it, right? And so my question is, if there is anything else that you only get to have occasionally, if you splurge on it, mm -hmm. right, right, because you want to be reasonable. Mm -hmm. And what is reasonable to you? What do you feel is reasonable for you? What's your metric of, of reasonability? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, okay. Uh-huh. No, you make perfect sense. I'm just gonna note it down here, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, now that you've given me a better sense of your daily morning routine, can you walk me through what a typical day is at work for you? Mm hmm And I see here on your file that you've mentioned Cheryl before. Is she a point of, um, you know, does she evoke different feelings from, from you? It could be different things like arousal, anger. Yes, because you're... Um, your doctor mentioned Cheryl here, and you just mentioned Cheryl now, so I just want to make sure that I'm clear on the details. She's your manager. Okay, great. And I assume she brings out conflicting feelings from you. Anger, disappointment, uh, impatience. Uh. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, we know that office romances are not kosher, but we... How are you dealing with that, really? <laughs> how conflicting is it for you? She drives you crazy in terms of competence, in terms of... Um, in terms of her abilities, in terms of the way she manages you. Okay, and yet somehow this turns you on. 
No, 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 I'm not judging you. Again, I'm not judging you. If you have conflicting feelings for Cheryl, it does happen. There are situations, it's, it's quite normal, in fact, to be attracted to someone that just pisses you off, right? I mean, we've all read those young adult fictions and those lovers to haters to lovers um, situations, so they are quite common in the fictional realm and perhaps the real world, too. <laughs> and how old is Cheryl? Right, right, okay. Well, this wasn't noted on your um, file, so I'm just gonna note that down. Cheryl's age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's not really, um, sorry, it's not meant to be entertaining, but we, you know, these types of situations, oh, it's, it makes things more interesting as someone who's listening to your story. Mm hmm And how often do you deal with Cheryl? In a professional um, way, is what I'm trying to say. Like, do you meet her often? Does she come over to your desk? Does she, um, you know, uh, come to your space? Or do you eat lunch with her? Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's barely an, any interaction at all. Okay. It's quite fascinating to me, honestly, your situation at the moment. So if I may just ask another question about her, what made you, you know, interested in her despite what you just described as managerial incompetence? Mm. Mm-hmm. And how does that make you feel, what you just described now? Let's stick with that word, confusion. Tell me why you're confused. Tell me what reasons have you come up with to help solve your confusion? Mm-hmm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Mm. Well, it looks to me that these are mostly because you don't interact with her often. There's this air of mystery around her. A very interesting um, um, situation you have. And it's this mystery that might be dragging you towards her. Do you, can you describe to me if this is something that you have dealt with in your past? Mm -hmm. Okay. No, 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 keep going. It's a lot of notes, I understand, but this is very important because, you know, I'm not your main psychologist. So she might need to hear more of these. I don't know if she knows about this already, does she? She doesn't, okay. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. So yes, it's a lot of notes, but I have to do this. So, um, this Cheryl person, what do you think you can do in order to solve this? Is this something that you would like to conclude in a sense that you don't want to deal with her anymore? Or is this something that you want to push further? Well, yes, I said office romances are often not kosher, but... As I said, this is an interesting predicament. If anything, this might help you solve or find a workaround about her managerial incompetence. You know what I mean? Yes, you either detach from her completely, meaning 
find another department or you push through with this, get to know her a little bit better and maybe understand why you feel like she's incompetent. I'm not dismissing that she's incompetent. I am saying that it would probably give you a better understanding of why she's incompetent and sort of demystify her so that you are less attracted to her. Mm -hmm. And would you say that she is your source of anxiety? Or are there other reasons? That's a lot of men. Mark and Kevin and Joseph and Kyle. Who are these men? Tell me. These aren't written in your psychologist's file, so these are new. It makes me wonder why you're suddenly so open to telling me all of these things, when you didn't tell me your psychologist about this before. Ah, I see. So you've been completely focused on a different aspect of your um, um, problems. Right, and what problems were those? Family troubles, right, that's a completely different field. But I'm wondering why she mentioned Cheryl here. I see. Right, well, I don't want to delve into your family problems, so let's focus on Mark and Joseph and Kyle and whoever. <laughs> I, I only say that because I feel like she has a stronger domain in these things. And maybe I can focus on just something else. Because who the hell would want to deal with it? Sorry. <clears throat> um, right. So, these men. Tell me more about them. They're the top performers. Some of them are? Okay. So, let me stop you right there. Can I just suggest something? Could it be that you're just jealous of these men because Cheryl is paying them more attention? I'm just assuming. I apologize. Let me back that up a bit. <sighs> Man, this guy is super self-unaware. <clears throat> Sorry. <clears throat> right. Um, okay, tell me more then. If you don't believe that this is because of Cheryl... Give me more information. Loud, obnoxious, rambunctious. Yes, I can imagine men like that. Most men are. <clears throat> so you're basically not a fan of them because they're just not like you. And how do you avoid them? <gasps> Would you say that they're bullying you? Well, it seems to me like they're just trying to push into your space too often. You know? So it might not be the fact that it's because Cheryl's more interested in them. But it might also be more of the fact that they're completely unlike you. And they take way too much space. And they are a group of men compared to you. You know? It might be a little bit too... How should I say this? Um... Goodness, the one time I lose my English dictionary in my head. All right, it might be that they're a little bit too overwhelming. Yeah, would you say that? Okay. Okay. Right, right. Yes, no, you totally make sense. I agree. Um, one second, please. Hello. What the fuck are you getting here? I have been playing distraction for 15, 20 minutes already. I don't know. Wow. The target is already like five minutes away, I think. Yeah, I was just checking the GPS. No, no, no. It would be much better if you pose as the doctor, because otherwise, I'm a little bit compromised at the moment. Well, yes, I have a patient. Well, I know I'm not supposed to have a patient, but I didn't know that the fucking Target had an appointment today. We didn't have enough intel. 
Well, yes, we didn't have enough until. Leave it to fucking. <coughs> leave it to them to miss a couple of details. So now I'm just figuring things out on, on the fly. So get your ass here right now. I can't play this fake ass fucking. <coughs> yeah, well, now we're diving into his fucking life as a co worker, etc., etc. Apparently, his case file is supposed to be dealing with his family, but this fucking psychologist does not take notes about the family. Or maybe I'm missing her file somewhere. Yeah. One second. I'll, 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 I'll be there. Sorry. It's just really important. So, no. You better fucking hurry up. No, how long? Okay, okay. Good, good. No, when you get here, just... I don't know. I don't care. I'm gonna dip out as fast as I can right now. And I'm gonna go get into position C, okay? Position C. Yes. Yes, I'll fucking... C as in Charlie. God damn it. I'll be in position Charlie. We're canceling. We're canceling the first one. Alpha and Bravo are done. Not enough details were given, so we're going with plan C, okay? Okay. Good. And also, can you get me some fried chicken? Yeah, I'm fucking hungry. Alright, great, cool. See you later. Sorry about that. We're call um, we're gonna wrap this up quickly. I know your psychologist is mostly dealing with your family trauma, but I don't think it's right for me to delve in too deep into that, and so it's why I'm focusing on more <clears throat> practical things that we can solve now you know what i mean like just to lighten things up so i'm gonna wrap this up uh this way absolutely do not go to hr because you know hr is not your friend i don't care what doctorates they have i don't care what their qualifications are hr is not your friend okay if you're dealing with these, these type of things easily find a different manager yes i know you'll be away from shallow but that doesn't matter Okay, your mental health matters first, all right? You matter first. And so the way we're going to do this is you are going to find another manager that you prefer, that you like to work with. Go and do some research, connect with your fellow friends or, you know, people that you like at work and people who like you. Ask them what their duties are, what their manager is like. If you have, if you find someone that's in your similar department, in a department similar to yours, <clears throat> go ahead and get to know what they're doing, what their needs are, see if you can fill in those gaps, and then talk to a manager there, all right? Because this whole thing with Cheryl and all these boys, I don't know. All right, I don't know if it's because you are just blissfully self, self, you know, blissfully self-unaware about your feelings about the boys and Cheryl, but this is not a green flag. This is totally a red flag and it can make your job more miserable. So avoid, 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 avoid. That's how you deal with these problems. Avoid. Okay? Um, what else? Right. Now, about your actual psychologist, don't tell her anything about this, okay? That we ever met. Right, yeah, because it is not my business, actually, to know much about her patients. It's actually none of my business after all. I basically got the short end of a stick from the management, from the system, so. I have tried to give you all of the um, practical advice I could give you, but the rest of the things you deal with your psychologist. In fact, I have your file here. There's a couple of doodles in it. Ignore it, but you are getting a little bit too chatty. Um, however, this has the details of what you just described to me. Give it to your psychologist. And when she asks, where the hell did this come from? Just say that you wrote this down because this also gave you a little bit of your anxiety. And so that she could deal with these things too. Sorry if I was being a little bit misleading, but... Again, system. Short end of the stick. I hope that you um, can uh, let this all pass and forget, about, forget that this ever happened. I will give you... This, though. This is a card from my <clears throat> company. Call them. Say that you have met me. This is the name I'm currently using. They know who I am. 
and they should be wiring you a check of a thousand dollars to keep your silence about this whole ordeal. Okay? <laughs> yes. No, you don't get to ask me any more questions. Now, if you excuse me, I have to leave. Remember to call this number. If you do not call this number within the next 24 hours, we will be contacting you very soon. I do have your patient files after all, right? So, accept what we have given you, and uh, I hope I never see you again. Ciao. Your ass better be here right now. Yes, yes, I've just dismissed the patient.